All right, how's it going everybody? Jesse here with Redefine Effects and today we'll be creating the smoke portal simulation with Niagara Fluids in Unreal Engine. So just to show you, it's a completely real-time simulation. I can freely walk around it. So this tutorial is actually just one out of 15 total videos inside of the free Niagara Fluids crash course where we set up multiple more effects completely from scratch. So if you'd like to keep learning VFX in Unreal Engine with me, make sure you grab the free course at redefinefx.com slash blast while it's still available. And with that, let's jump right into it. So I'm starting with a blank scene as usual. We can just right click, make a new Niagara system, create an empty system, just call it NS underscore portal, double click. We need to give birth to some particles. So right click, add emitter, I'll just create an empty emitter, hit F2 to rename it as emitter underscore particles. Let's go under emitter update and create a new spawn rate module. And let's give birth to 1000 particles. Then under initialized particle, we can make them live shorter times to so lifetime three. And for the size, just set it to uniform and I'll give them a size of three as well. Next, we need these to be born on top of a torus. So particle spawn, again, click on the plus sign and just search for location. And we need the shape location module. Here you can change it from sphere to torus. And I did 125 for the large radius, 25 for the handle radius. So you're getting something like this, but right now it's sitting on the floor and we need it to be standing up. So for that, just go to the rotation mode and set it to axis angle. And right away, just with the default settings, it's gonna be rotated 90 degrees for you like this. Now we need the particles to spin around. So for that, we can go to particle update. Again, particle update is what happens to the particles over the course of their lifetime. So that's why we're in this group. And let's add a force and add the vortex force. It's gonna say that it wants the solve forces and velocity module in order for it to work. So just click fix issue and it's gonna show up here. And now it's working, but it's rotating the wrong way. So the vortex axis needs to be one on the X and zero on the Z. So now it's rotating correctly. So we need to just slow them down with a drag module. So again, plus sign, just search for drag and add a drag module. So it is better, but they're still overshooting. So we can just lower the vortex force from 200 to 100. And now they're staying relatively contained to the donut shape. So that's exactly what we need. Now, one minor improvement we can do is the particles right now are popping into place and dying very abruptly. So we can make them scale up and scale down over time. So again, under particle update, you can just search for size and use the scale sprite size module. So this controls the size of the particles over time. So they begin small and then they die at their full size. That's what this graph means. I actually want them to start invisible. Then in the middle, so you can right click and add a key. I want them to be at their full size. So I'm moving it all the way to a value of one. And at the end of their life, I want them to disappear again. So I'll just drag this down to zero. So as you can see right now, the particles are born invisible. They slowly scale up and then they slowly scale down as they die. And you can do control A to select all of the keyframes, then hit one, which will make them smooth keyframes. So now you have something a bit more elegant. So before we add the smoke, make sure you save your work. So just file, save all. Again, Niagara Fluids is still in beta and it can crash easily, right? So now we need to tell Niagara that we want these particles to emit smoke. And for that, we need to go under particle update again and just search for set. And we need the set fluid source attributes. This is letting Niagara know that we want these particles to act as little sources for smoke and fire. In our case, we just want smoke. So I'll set the temperature to zero and the density I ended up doing 0.3 after some back and forth. So now we can create our smoke emitter. So right click, add emitter, parent emitters, and we want the grid 3D gas master emitter, double click. And we can just collapse all these settings because all we really care about is the emitter summary. If you've watched any of my previous Niagara tutorials, I have gone over these settings in detail, so you can check those out. First thing we need to do is get rid of the sphere emitter and have the smoke be emitted from the particles. So I'll just go to source and turn off the sphere source. 
and instead I want to use a particle source, set it to emitter. Now we need to set our emitter particles to be a GPU particle simulation. So just go to properties and change it to a GPU sim and set the bounds to fixed to get rid of the warning. And now if we go back to our gas emitter, we can just change the emitter name, just start typing emit and select your emitter particles. Click away, wait for it to update, and here you go. Now the particles are emitting smoke. Now the grid is too small. So under simulation, I'll do 800 on the x-axis, 1200 on the y, and 600 on the z. So now we have a much bigger grid to accommodate our portal. We also need the portal to be more higher up. So that's what the local pivot is for. So I'll just set the x to 0.2 and the z to 0.2 as well. So these are the values that I used previously where the portal is sitting just right above the ground. Now, right now, the smoke is rising up and we don't want that. So that's what the density buoyancy does. The negative value means that it's going up. Positive value means that it's going down. So I'll set it to a positive value of 0.1, which will make the smoke just slightly heavy and it's going to linger around like this. And finally, I need the smoke to disappear much sooner. That's what the dissipation rate density is for. If I raise this value, it's going to remove the smoke faster. So I ended up setting this to 0.9 and you'll see now that the smoke is dissipating much, much quicker, making for a nicer portal. Now, we also need to raise the resolution of the simulation to get some nicer detail. So I'll actually set the maximum resolution from 200 to 500 which is quite high. I would say be careful going higher than this. It can crash and the pressure solve iterations all set to 12. This just helps improve collisions with the floor. So you can turn off the sprite renderer for your particles. So all you see is just the smoke. So it doesn't look that great, uh, but the lighting will make a huge difference. And also what we can do is push the smoke to the back a little bit to give it more depth. So we can go under forces, wind, and just enable calculate wind. And let's increase the wind magnitude to maybe 10. And you see now it's pushing the smoke back, making it look a bit more 3D and, and cooler than before. And one more thing that we can do is make it collide with the floor. Right now the smoke is getting killed when it touches the floor. So under collisions, you can uncheck open boundary minus Z. And now the smoke will actually collide with the ground. So let's also go under simulation and uncheck draw bounds so we don't see the simulation box. And again, just a reminder, make sure that you're saving your work. So file, save all. Let's go back into our level and I'll just drag my NS portal into the scene. Move it up so it's sitting just nicely on the ground. All right, so we're almost there. One more thing we can do to improve how this spinning motion looks is with the motion velocity. So under the set fluid source attributes, you have this velocity scale. This controls how much velocity is transferred from the particles onto the smoke. So if I want the particles to contribute more velocity, I can just raise this from one to two, and it's just gonna make the smoke um, spin around faster than before. And one more thing we can do to improve this is set the radius of the particles to just five. And this will create some more subtle trails behind the particles so it's not so obvious. And I think that's looking much nicer now than it was before. All right, so finally, we just need to do something about this nasty lighting. So you can just turn off or just delete the directional light altogether. Then what I like to do is just go under Edit, Project Settings, and just search for Auto Exposure and turn off the Auto Exposure so that the brightness is not changing on its own for you. Next, we can go under Create Lights and make a new Spotlight. Make sure right away that you search for Cast and enable the Cast Volumetric Shadows. Super important to make this look good. And at this point, I will just switch back to my original scene to show you what I did for the lighting. So for the environment, it's just a few imported rocks straight from Quixel. And for the lighting, if I zoom out, basically I have a few spotlights. This one is illuminating just the rocks. This one is illuminating the smoke from the back. So the backlighting really adds a lot to it, right? So I have this light here, and then I have this spotlight illuminating the smoke from the back as well. 
Then in the middle, I just have this blue point light with a pretty high intensity. Again, this is what that does. And then I have one more blue light just illuminating the rocks in the background. So, you know, feel free to change the colors, place the lights wherever you would like to make it look cool. And one last thing I added to make this look even a touch better are these little particles flying through the smoke. So for that, you can just copy your emitter particles, just do control C, control V and rename it as particles underscore glowing or something like that. You can turn off the set fluid attributes. We don't need these particles to emit any smoke and just enable the sprite renderer so you can see them, right? So now you have the particles just flying through the smoke and I'll turn off the smoke for now just so it's faster to deal with this. So spawn rate, maybe just 200 particles just give them a size of maybe one and you can also give this a range so you can click on this arrow here and set it to a random range float and give them a size anywhere from 0.5 to 1.5 and let's add some curl noise to make them look like fireflies so you can just click on the plus and again just type curl and add the curl noise force and just set this pretty high to maybe 300 that's too much, so 150. It's up to you, maybe even that's too much. So I'll just do 75 and finally you can make them blue. So initialize particle, color mode. You can do a random range and just give them a range anywhere from like a bright blue to let's say like a darker blue. And that's how you get your little particles flying through the smoke, easy breezy. So as always, I hope that you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Definitely check out the free Niagara crash course where we cover several more effects from start to finish, just like this smoke portal. And I go into a lot more detail explaining all of the settings. So if anything in this tutorial wasn't clear, definitely check out the free course where I go over everything in even more detail. The course is available for free at redefineffects.com slash blast. I would love to see you inside of it. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.